Since the rediscovery of what is unquestionably the most puzzling, astounding, and enigmatic site on Earth, the Great Pyramids and the Sphinx of Giza, we have been led to believe that what could be described as an astonishingly accurate yet somewhat vandalistic later addition was once put there by a caliph named al mamun Now popularly known by its coined title, al mamuns Forced Entrance, this title, although argued as his work, has a pretty compelling tale attached to its possible original purpose. When one actually looks into what an incredible achievement this tunnel once was, it becomes apparent that it was cleverly bored by an ancient people, far more advanced than a 9th century caliph. Additionally, possible hypotheses have been put forth as to its origins by individuals who may have known of entrances into the pyramid. We in the modern world have either lost knowledge of or have been prevented from knowing about their existence. Hinged doorways made of stone perfectly counterbalanced to allow an average-sized man to open and close them. Doorways along the structure's north face that, when closed, become seemingly indistinguishable from its surroundings. Are there still secret entrances along the pyramid's northern side? Quote, the Great Pyramid, a little way up on one side, has a stone that may be taken out, which being raised up, there is a sloping passage to the foundations." End quote. Written by Strabo in Pyramids and Temples of Giza, Flinders Petri. Yet regardless of these additional, highly compelling investigative leads put forward in addition to an explanation for the tunnel's existence, its remarkable accuracy remains a tough thing for supporters of academia's tale of events to explain. As author Ralph Ellis puts it, quote, the main problem with the classical explanation was that Mamun's tunnel is rather too accurate for comfort. It tracks into the pyramid in a direct line for the all-important junction between the descending and ascending passageways. It is often cited that Mamun had to turn the tunnel sharp left to discover the original passageways, a fact that Ralph had in the back of his mind when they first visited the Great Pyramid. But he ambled down the forced tunnel rather mystified, because the left turn cited in the literature could not be found. Having backtracked the tunnel and to try again, that left turn seemed to be no more than a slight widening of the tunnel. In fact, the digging was almost right on target." End quote. For how does one know where one is when deep within the passages of such an incredibly huge ancient structure? Secondly. If instead argued as having been started from without, the same problem has to be solved. For how did one know how to create the initial angle? Although it is now the most used entrance and although it has been drawn upon countless plans, to draw an existing tunnel's precise line of descent is far more easier than to have created said precise angle in the first place. And within the Great Pyramid is the remaining half of what has often been used to create a compelling, possible explanation for this tunnel's original purpose. Known as the Sarcophagus of Khufu, an anomalous object found within the pyramid, an artifact we have covered in the past. No one can explain how this giant stone object came to be within the pyramid. It would not have fit through the existing entrance tunnels. However, at some time in the pyramid's life, someone smashed into this stone box, took its past contents and the sarcophagus lid, an object that would also have not fit round the turns of the existing tunnel system, yet would have fit through the force tunnel and due to the vandalistic nature of the tunnel itself, could be argued that this damage to the sarcophagi was inflicted by the same group of individuals who built the tunnel one used to extract the so-called sarcophagus's lid. Is this the real past purpose of the tunnel? And if created by a caliph in the 9th century, how did he tunnel so accurately on target? And additionally, where is this lid now? Was this tunnel, like the many different layers of casing stones indicate, built by a later yet also lost civilization, one who flourished far before even the ancient Egyptians? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling.